to begin this Mass of the Divine Mercy. Mass is going to be celebrated by Father Mila, and we continue to pray for all our sick, pray for our medical persons who are risking their lives every day to provide care and administer healing to our sick. We pray for our first responders, pray for our military, pray for EMS workers, pray for our fire department and all those who are sickened by this virus trying to care for others. Pray that God may protect them and protect their families. And finally, we pray for leaders around the world that we may all come together to fight this one enemy. Uh, our opening hymn will be City of God. City of God. Away from your soul. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Amen. with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, though physical distance may separate us, uh, we are united. Uh, for God there is no distance. And uh, so we welcome all of those who are um, joining us from different parts of the hospital, as well as from different parts of the world, in Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And um, so as we gather in this uh, Easter season, we pause, first of all, to continue to ask for healing, both physical, emotional, spiritual, for ourselves, for our churches, for our nation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And in this Easter season, we, we will say the, the song that uh, uh, is the glory and praise to our, our Lord. Lord. Glory to God in the highest. And on the peace to people of goodwill, we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son, Son, Lord God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. 
For you will not have holy one, you will not the Lord, you will not have the most high Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We bow our heads in silent prayer. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death you raise us with him, and you renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ. Help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This first reading describes um, the community of the disciples of Jesus sometime after the resurrection, uh, when after the initial period of confusion and fear, uh, they begin to discover that the Spirit is taking them uh, in wonderful new directions. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is, is good, his, his love, love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, mm. kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through <coughs> faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable, e even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the apostles, the disciples were, for fear of the leaders of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were again inside. Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you've seen me? Blessed those are those who have not seen and have believed. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. These are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many uh, years of my life, I've been lucky enough to live in parishes and parishes with, with elementary schools. Uh, and it was always my custom and always uh, a, a great joy for me to visit the uh, parish school during the Easter season, and especially the third and fourth graders who, uh, whose minds are coming alive and their curiosity is, is intense. And I would go into the fourth grade after Easter and we'd talk about Jesus rising from the dead. And uh, I'd say, no, if you had been there on that first Easter Sunday, and we're walking down the road and met the risen Lord, the risen Jesus, what would you ask him? What would you say to him? Um, <clears throat> so it was always amazing. In fact, I've collected all the various answers I got to that question during the years, and I'll just share three of them with you. Uh, so the question to the fourth graders was, you met the risen Jesus on the Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, what would you say to him or ask him? One little girl said, well, I'd ask him, did it hurt? One little boy said, would say to the risen Jesus, 
let's go and scare my sister. <laughs> and another little girl, obviously uh, well taught, would ask the risen Jesus, have you gone to see your mother yet? And those were you know, wonderful questions. Um, and uh, sometimes I think we, we feel like those people that met the risen Jesus uh, back there 2,000 years ago, as we read about them, uh, some met him on the road, some met him at the seashore, some met him in a room that was locked. We say, well, boy, you know, sure, it would be easy to believe in the risen Christ if I'd seen that. I mean, who wouldn't believe if you saw the risen Christ and talked to him, touched him? But, you know, we're not part of that generation. It's 2,000 years later. It's thousands of miles away. Um, so we feel like, mistakenly, I think, we feel like though that generation was privileged, that of course they believed because they saw, you know. But of course, as you, as you listen to the readings today, the whole point of the readings is not just that Jesus rose from the dead, but that you didn't have to be an eyewitness 2,000 years ago in a little country called Israel to see him, to experience him. That's his whole point. He's in every one of these places and times where he appears after the resurrection. He says to them, peace, don't be afraid, and I am not leaving you. I am with you in a new way. You will never be abandoned. I am with you, but in a new way. And what is that new way? Well, again, Jesus, the, the, the scriptures show us and tell us that uh, the people who lived after the last appearance of Jesus, of the risen Jesus, if you will, the people who lived then uh, didn't just keep thinking, well, it was great, we have great memories of Jesus, you know, we had some good times, we saw him after he rose from the dead, uh, we believe he was the Messiah, and we have some wonderful memories. No, 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 it was much more than that. They actually realized that the risen Christ was with them, but in new ways. And Jesus tells them that. He's, he tells them, I'm going to be among you in new ways. Today he appears to a group of disciples who were locked in for fear. And it doesn't say the apostles, so it's presumably the group of disciples included more than the apostles. It probably included some of the women disciples. Uh, so they weren't all bishops or, you know, uh, and Jesus appeared to them, and he tells them, you know, I'm going to be with you in this new way. When you can forgive one another, or when the person that's lost and hates themselves for what they've done and is burdened by guilt and shame finds forgiveness in you, that's when a sign I am still with you. You don't have to touch my hands and my feet to know that. When you forgive, and when you welcome those who are lost and ashamed and guilty, I'm with you. Uh, he tells them, uh, when you sit down at table and share a meal and worship together, I am with you. And they still do that, don't they, 2,000 years later. It's not just a memory. It's not just, you know, we're celebrating, memorializing something from 2,000 years ago. Christ, the risen Christ, is with us. And that beautiful first reading describes the Christian community. Long after Jesus had ceased to appear in his risen body, that community was quite unusual. As it said, it, it talked about their worshiping every week together, sharing this, this meal, but sharing their lives. And it said there was no one in need among them because they took care of anyone in need. I am with you, Jesus is saying, as you do that. They were 
the presence of the risen Christ. It wasn't just a memory. It wasn't just the words of an eyewitness or five eyewitnesses. They were living that. Let me just give you one final example. Brother David's already heard this, but um, I used to live in Brazil, and uh, of course, Holy Week in Brazil uh, has one, many wonderful customs, as I'm sure in your countries too. Um, have many processions. Practically every day of Holy Week, there's a, there's a procession. But on Good Friday, there's a special procession called uh, the Procession of Cristo Muerto, of the dead Christ. And there's a statue of Jesus, dead, the dead body of Christ, in the form of statues carried out of the church in procession through the town, in this case, this town where I lived, which was a, a medium sized town, maybe about 20,000 people. And we'd walk through the streets carrying the dead Christ, if you will. But as we walked, we'd pass houses, and the families would come out of the house. Some of them were obviously in the middle of a meal, but Cristo Muerto was passing, so they would, they would leave. They would come out and join the procession. Um, we would pass, uh, you know, the corner bars, which were busy as usual, you know, mostly men sitting there. Some of the men who had probably not stepped inside a church uh, for years. Uh, and yet when the procession with Cristo Muerto passed by, they left behind their table of drinks and snacks and joined the procession. Uh, so by this time, the procession was growing and growing. It would be old people with canes. It would be children. It would be parents carrying children. We would pass through the part of the town. Every part, every town had a part that was reserved for the prostitutes. The prostitutes had to live in a special part of the town, kind of segregated from the rest. We would pass down that street, and they would join the procession. The beggars who would sit on the corner, usually people who were physically or mentally challenged uh, were, and had to beg for food, were welcomed in the procession. Um, dogs joined the procession. The whole town joined the procession. By the time we had passed through the town with the statue of Cristo Muerto, it was no longer Cristo Muerto. It was Cristo vivo. It was the risen Christ. It was no longer a memory of Jesus who died, not just a memory of Jesus who rose 2,000 years ago, far away. He was now alive and risen among them, in them, through them, because they had gathered. They had welcomed one another. They had forgiven one another. They had included one another. Whether they were sinners or saints, whether they were family people or, you know, playboys or, uh, you know, daily mass goers or even prostitutes, they felt welcomed, they felt healed and forgiven. That was the risen Christ. And that is the risen Christ, my brothers and sisters, that we continue to experience. Even now in the midst of this crisis where we can't even gather together, in one room for worship, we are somehow still united. Even though their countries are still have their conflicts and their, their competition, and you have people, governments uh, competing for ventilators and things like that, and yet somehow people pull together in a crisis. And they care about one another. They care about the stranger, not just the person they know. They care about their whole town, their whole hospital. Um, that's the risen Christ. We don't always give it a religious name, but it's the risen Christ. Um, and as the scripture tells us today, Christ is risen. He has not left us. He is with us in a new way. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to share our needs and petitions.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to God from true God, because he not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, and according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God, for the disciples of Jesus, that they may be the presence of the risen Christ wherever they live, whatever they do especially in times of need and fear and crisis. That we may be the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the patients here at Wolverine Bethesda, that they may know God's healing and peace and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the staff here, Altenburg Bethesda and all your various roles and professions mm -hmm. that you may know that you are part of the healing of the risen Christ for those that you are serving we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for what else shall we pray let us pray for all those who have asked our prayers Pray especially for people who are grieving at this time because they have lost their loved ones. Pray for those who have died, died away from the love and affection of their families. That God may give rest to our dead. That God may give healing and comfort to our grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear I'd like to pray that we can recognize God has called us mercy. He wishes to be known as God of love and of mercy. Very often, our image of Him is a frightening God, a vengeful God, a God that is still in fire waiting to punish us. But today, He wishes to be known for His mercy that ocean of mercy awaiting all those who want to swim in it. That people all over the world, especially we who are Christians, may not lose the opportunity we are given to ask for forgiveness because he wants to give it to us. That this mercy may be known all over the world and particularly today God I beg of you on behalf of your people through your mercy have mercy on the world and help us tackle this coronavirus we pray to the Lord Lord hear yeah, our prayer we pray all this through Christ our Lord Thank you. Amen Our offering him will be in bread we bring you Lord. In bread we bring you Lord. In bread we bring
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. church. Lord, through faith and baptism, we have become a new creation. Accept the offerings of your people and bring us to eternal happiness. Grant this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. O powerful, ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever this Easter season when Christ became our Passover sacrifice. He made us sons and daughters of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He's opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His rising is our rising to life. And so the joy of the resurrection renews the whole world. And we join the angels, saints, and all creation as we praise him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Lord, you are holy indeed. All creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy, by the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke the bread and gave it to his followers, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, and we profess your resurrection until you come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look with favor just offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his holy spirit and become one body one spirit in christ may he make of us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints especially with mary the virgin mother of god with blessed joseph as spouse with the apostles, the martyrs, 
and with all those saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, with all the bishops, with the religious, the laity, the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered before you this morning. In your mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through, through him, him with, with him, him, in him, O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. United with the risen Christ who is present among us, and through him united with our brothers and sisters, all throughout the hospital and all throughout the world. We pray the prayer he gave us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your followers, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. We share some sign of peace with those around you. Peace be with 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 you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, the risen Christ, who lives among us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, that all the sin in the world and my soul shall be healed. Sing sweet sacrament to thine. Sweet sacrament divine, I bring thy deadly Oh. 
sacrament of peace, dear home for every heart, where restless yearning sees and so. God, may the Easter sacraments we have received live forever in our minds and hearts. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Redeemer has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. By faith you rose with Jesus in baptism. May your lives be holy, that you be united with him forever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us on in this Easter season, this celebration of the risen Christ among us. May uh, the joy and the um, strength and peace of Easter continue to be a part of your daily life. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and the world in need. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. mercy in abundance. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless you. Bye. Amen. God bless you. And there will be